Hello there, Mad Mike here, and welcome back to the channel. And today, uh, we have some news coming uh, about the new Evil Dead film that is currently in development. Now, um, we had news before that the film is going to be called Evil Dead Rises, but uh, Bruce Campbell in an interview has actually given us a few more points, and some of these may have been uh, reiterated before, so I'm just going to kind of go over everything just so I have everything in this video now. Uh, Bruce Campbell sat down and gave an interview when they asked him about the Evil Dead series, the next film, would he be in it? Um, and this this was before he said that no, he would not be. Um, this would be a film that would be kind of like a soft reboot, that kind of a deal, um, where it, it doesn't involve him as the Ash character and he will not be in it. Now, this is um, this is something that I thought was a bad idea. I still think it's a bad idea. I think if you want to really finish off the Evil Dead series, carry on from where Ash vs. Evil Dead left off and do the post-apocalypse Deadite film, and then it's all over. Then you've ended it. Then there's no more. Then Bruce Campbell can ride off into the sunset, or you can kill off his character finally, or you can do whatever. Um, but regardless, I think that would have been the correct route to go. Instead, they're going the route where they can kind of renew the franchise for a newer generation, which they tried originally with the previous reboot, and it did not fare so well. Um, but here's what we've learned so far about this production. Now, according to Bruce Campbell, the director for this project um, is a man named Lee Cronin. Uh, he's an Irish writer and director, um, and he's been handpicked by Sam Raimi himself. So uh, this is... Uh, I've looked at some of his things. He does a lot of low-budget horror, which... Again, Sam Raimi is probably, I should say probably, he is very, very much acquainted with because of the, you know, the early Evil Dead films and stuff like that. Um, so I understand why he went after this guy and why he picked him. They probably share a very similar sense of humor, I would imagine. Um, so I don't really have any too many concerns with the director, at least not right now. Uh, Bruce Campbell also says that they have a script in place. They have everything. All they need is a backer, basically, and they're shopping the project around right now to try and get the correct person, that the, the correct studio and the correct people they want to uh, bring this film to life. Now, here is the uh, here here's where things get kind of uh, get kind of dicey for me. Um, now the setting for the film is different than we've seen in previous entries in the series. Now, as far as most of the Evil Dead films, they have really, for the most part, uh, even the television show, they all take place in the woods. They take place in this very isolated area in the woods. Sometimes they're at the same fucking cabin, um, like Evil Dead One, Two, and. Uh, various parts of Ash vs. Evil Dead, the television show. Um, the only one that really kind of takes you out of that uh, type of an environment, as far as the movies go, is really the uh, Army of Darkness, because that takes you back to the medieval times, castle, stuff like that. And then obviously they had the teased sort of, uh, you know, the undead, deadite, that kind of thing, where, you know, or the, uh, the post-apocalypse uh, type of environment, which we were teased at the end of uh, Ash vs. Evil Dead, the television series. So, um, really, we, we've been in that place for a long time. So I don't really think it's bad to bring the Deadites to a more populated area, but here's your problem, is that the Deadites, if you were to spread the, uh, the various things that happened with the Necronomicon, the demons and stuff that it can summon, and if you were to spread that out through a very large building, you would have pure fucking insanity. You know, you, we see how, you know, Bruce Campbell, at least in the first film, and then, you know, subsequent characters later on in the series, how they have issues dealing with even a few of the Deadites because they don't die. They keep coming back. You can decapitate them, you can cut them into pieces, you can burn them, they won't die. Um... So to have like a whole building full of those things, and keep in mind, this also factors back into something else that Bruce Campbell said that I want to dissect a little bit. Um, you have a very, very big problem on your hands uh, from a standpoint of how do people actually fight these things at this point. Um, you know, it kind of reminds me a little bit of the film Demons, where the idea of, you know, they kind of spread, the, the, the demons that are originally confined to the inside of the movie theater then spread out into the world and start infecting other people. Um, and they do the second film, actually, I believe, does take place in an apartment building, and we get to see kind of that play out, which is basically just people getting hacked to pieces. Um, 
But, you know, looking at what Bruce Campbell wants to do, you know, even he's saying, like, oh, it's about people, you know, regular people, you know, not trained people, not people that know how to do this, you know, fighting these things. Um, and that just leads me even more to, like, okay, it's just going to be a bloodbath from beginning to end. There's not really going to be, I mean, if somebody does come through, it's not really going to be anything too, uh, you know, they're not, it's not going to be Bruce Campbell coming in with the boomstick and the chainsaw. It's not going to be that. Um, so it, and that's the other problem to me about moving on from this is that and this kind of goes for any series that's developed a very uh, recognizable uh, symbol or a very recognizable character to kind of be the face of the franchise. Um, and Bruce Campbell is the face of the Evil Dead franchise as a whole. The only project that I'm aware of that doesn't have him in it is the remake, and the remake is something that did not do very well. Um, the only thing that he was in in that was there was a little post credit scene where he turns to the camera and he says, Groovy, that, that's really the only part that he had in that film. Um, but you know, I, I like the idea of, of kind of uh, you know taking the taking the book and saying like, oh, you know, it's been in different people's hands over periods of time, you know, different people have done different things with it, and it, it, it's it's wreaked its havoc in other places. Like, okay, that's kind of an interesting idea, but at the same time, we're all attached to the Ash character at this point. It's not like we had one movie with him, and then they like, left them behind. Um, reminds me a little bit of, like, Halloween, when they uh, John Carpenter uh, tried to make it into a... Uh, a, an anthology series with Halloween 3 Season of the Witch, where they didn't have Michael Myers in the film. Um, and he was in the first two movies. But he had already become the face of that franchise. So to release a film like that without him in it, uh, without Michael Myers in it, it, it didn't do as well as they would have wanted it to do. Um, so they ran into that problem, and that's the same problem that this film is going to run into, I think, in the end, is that it, it, the only way that I think you can salvage it is if you use some of the characters from the television series. If you bring it up and you use the, the you know, his two companions there that he travels with, uh, Pablo, and I, I can't remember the, uh, the, the the girl's name, um, or maybe, you know, the, the character that Lucy Lawless plays, or, you know, a anything like that. Drudge up, or maybe his daughter, too. Uh, you know, drudge up some of those characters, because people seem to respond fairly well to them, for the most part. People liked those characters in that show. But the other thing is, is that those characters, their dynamic, I think the large reason why it worked was because of Bruce Campbell. I don't think it would have worked if he hadn't been there. Um, and like I said, I think that's the same problem you're going to run into with this film. It's like, okay, it's Evil Dead, but is it really? Um, you know, I, I think what you would be better off doing in this scenario is if you're not going to make uh, the, you know, the final movie, if you're not going to get Bruce Campbell to come back for one more round and just do one film and then wash his hands of it forever uh, or for however much longer, you know, after that, um, you know... It, if you're not going to do that, then don't do the movie. Just just make a different type of a film. It, Sam Raimi can make a zombie splatter film like nobody's business. Do something like that. Make another film. Make something else. Um, I know he's dabbled in other things. He has stuff like Drag Me to Hell. He has stuff like, um, I think he was a producer on that movie Crawl that came out uh, either last year or the year before, the one about the alligators. Um you know stuff like that. You know he's very good at creature features. He he loves those those type of monster films, um, and I think that if he didn't, you know, if, if he wasn't so attached to resurrecting Evil Dead, which he did successfully with the television show, I will say that you know the the television show Ash vs Evil Dead is hilarious and amazing. I love that television show, all three seasons of it, um, but. I think that if you're not going to put a cap on that, if you're not, because they, they left it kind of open ended, if you're not going to put a cap on that, then don't go back to it because people are not going to react well if you don't have Bruce Campbell as Ash in in uh, the movie. Um, and that's the other thing too is that you can't really replace Bruce Campbell as Ash either. That's the pro that that's a bigger problem is because Bruce Campbell is very much. Uh, his own entity. He, he's not somebody that apes a lot off of other people or off of other performances. He is very much his own type of character. Um, 
and he he's very good at what he does. He's very good at being a snarky asshole and being being a dumbass on screen and stuff like that. And he said before that that comes partially from personal experience, but um, you know, he's great at playing that character, and we all know him as that character. You know, we can think of I can think of him in other roles as well. But I mean, when you think of Bruce Campbell, you think of of Ash. There's no other there's no other character that you can put up in that echelon that comes even close. Um, you know, even, you know, the television show he did, the adventure, uh, the, uh, God damn it. The adventures of like Briscoe County or County Briscoe, something like that. Um, yeah, I think it was Briscoe County and, and, you know, other various roles that he's had over the years, they don't even come close. So, that's kind of my feelings on hearing this information come out about how this movie is going to play out and, you know, what the elements are going to be. Um, but I want to know what you think. You know, I, I'm in, uh, I'm kind of a, a little bit attached to some of the to the Evil Dead, you know, the original three films of the television show. Um, but, you know, I, I want to know what you think. You know, do you think that it's a good idea to move forward with the Evil Dead franchise without Bruce Campbell? Do you think that maybe they should just do one last film like I do and, you know, cap off what they left off on the TV series? Um, do you think that maybe they, they are due for another reboot and maybe they can make it work? Um, would you like to see any of the characters from either the films or the television shows make a return? As usual, you know, put your thoughts in the comments below. I like to read them. Uh, hit the bell for notifications. Hit the like button. Subscribe. And remember, I live my life free of compromise. Do you?